Hello, everybody. Final showdown ahead. Come on, hobbitses. Almost there. Alrighty, so for the first part of this chapter, uh, Fredo is drunk. Uh, well, not really, but um, he is so tired, he literally cannot jump, and he walks around like he's about to pass out any second. So, we need to be in charge of Sam for most of this. And our main objective, aside from smashing things, I cannot actually equip my frying pan right now either, much to my disappointment, is to create a path, uh, so Frodo can keep going up. Because with the about the ability to jump, see he cannot come up here. So let's smash these crates here. And we're gonna build him a little ramp. Isn't that nice of us? Sam, you're such a good friend. Climbing up a volcanic mountain of doom. Ugh, you're so awesome. Alright, so we smash that. And we can actually get a little jetty so we can fish. But we don't actually need that. I was just creating that for the heck of it. We really need to smash this rock right here. Nope, that didn't get... Okay, never mind. I'm confusing this area with another one. Alright, so we just jump right across on here. And we yank that down with our, uh, with our rope. Now, if you don't jump off, you may end up getting stuck in the lava, so yeah, just be aware of that. So let's climb on the bars here. That's going to trigger the scene for this to start falling down. But that will not deter Sam. No way. We can still get up here. Yeah, I didn't mean, I didn't want to go in the dark area yet. I want these studs up here first. So we stand on that, and let Frodo come up. And now we actually need to use Frodo, because we need the help of his flashlight. Thankfully he can still push stuff, which is pretty awesome. Oh, uh, I didn't want to go in there with Sam, so that's going to fall in the lava and solidify. So let's dig this up. And this is the rock I was just thinking of a moment ago. We want to throw it at that one, smash that down. It's going to stop the flow of the lava, and I'm surprised I didn't fall in the hole right there. So right here is just a little bit of timing to avoid the lava streams there. Alright. Let's climb across the bars again as I fall because I'm a moron. There we go. That was what's supposed to happen. Apparently I jumped too far and missed that little cutscene. So I usually like to switch back to Frodo for this part because now the slabs are going to move. So you just need to, you know, frog right over here. And because everything's moving, Frodo usually won't move on his own for this part. There we go. Alright. Sam, I, no, no, Frodo, don't you dare. There we go. See, Sam can jump across it, but Frodo can't, which is kind of stinky. Smash those for some studs. I'm not going to get anywhere near True Adventure, but I just want the studs anyway. So let's break that down as it continues to spew studs. We're going to keep Sam on standby real No, don't follow me. Get back over here. Because we need Frodo's flashlight, and we need him to lead Sam through here. Thankfully, he followed on his own. Awesome, Sam. So the mountain is going to crumble further. Sam, pull.
pull your rope. Create us a bridge. Which I just prefer to just jump right across. Because I can never walk straight on that. So what we want to do is Ferda should climb up there on his own. We want to come to this one. And raise it so he's up here. Now with him up here we want to start smashing some blocks. Even though he's very slow at it and smashing it with his flashlight. And eventually we're going to unearth a little bridge here. So what we want to do is we want to jump back down with Frodo to get Sam to come up here. And now Sam can jump across this part over here. And now we want to dig and reveal some planks that are um, yeah, a little too big for that gardening hole, but that's okay. So that's going to create a ramp. And now Frodo can cross to the other side as well. Now we just jump over there with some timing. But we're going to go ahead and yank that down anyway. Because that's going to block it and let Frodo get up here. So first we want to smash some of this stuff right here. And we're going to create a platform. Nope, Frodo get out of my way and let Sam jump on that. Climb up there with your rope. Frodo, you were supposed to be on there. Let's try that again. Because our objective here is to lift Frodo up. And he should climb over to the platform, which we can now push over here. So now we need to switch back to him. Get underneath here with your flashlight. It's very easy to miss. I, I got stuck on this part and I'm like, how do I do this? So have him smash the brick, rock, thing, whatever. And that is going to reveal us a chute. Now it is actually possible with good timing to have Sam jump up here and actually smash that rock to knock it over. So you can do it without Frodo going through that little tunnel. It's a little tricky to do so. That's how I did it the first time, not realizing that was a dark cave that we needed uh, Frodo to get through. So we actually need both of them up here. Climb on through, my friend. You can make it. We're almost there. See? See, we can see right there at the top, the summit. Yeah. Come on, Mr. Frodo. I can't carry it for you. But I can carry you. Come on! <laughs> are such a bro. Alright. So, first thing we want to do, we want to switch back to Sam, grab this rock, and chug it right at his bum. Get off my buddy, man! So now he's going to jump over here, which is out of Sam's reach. So, now we have to switch to Frodo, grab a rock, and throw it back. And we're going to lather, rinse, repeat on this sequence right here. <laughs> now I'm not sure if it matters who you attack to, who you attack with when on the center like that, and I did not dodge that and pick that rock up in time. Sorry about that. I don't know if it matters who you attack with at this point. Well, when he's in the center position, but I know once he's on either side, you have to attack with the Hobbit on that side. And I was not paying attention there, and I walked right into the lava. That was pretty stupid of me. We're almost there! Can't you leave us alone? Frodo! Destroy it! The ring is mine. Huh? 
So here we have another fight. Gollum, get off me! So once we shake Gollum off, if the button would press, we need to switch to Sam. But first, studs. So now we actually have our frying pan equipped. Which is pretty awesome. And we're going to wallop Gollum with it. Once we finish collecting these studs. I might actually make true adventure in this. Wow. I'm actually impressed with myself. Depends on how many I need and how many studs are left. Totally interrupting most, you know, like the climax of everything here to collect studs. I'm awful. So we need to whack him twice. Now he's going to start yanking on our hair. No, you cannot have a piggyback ride. So eventually that'll happen. And we'll both fall below. But Samwise will not be deterred. We're going to climb right back up there and finish what we started. We came all this way. Such a long journey. I'm not going to see it end prematurely now. Now on these two platforms at the top here, the, uh, the bar is actually on the front and not the side. So we're going to delay the inevitable a little bit longer to collect some studs here. Actually, I'll get some in the ending sequence, so... I may not need to be doing this unnecessarily smashing. So now, as you can see, he's back onto Frodo. Now, the game actually doesn't tell you to do this, but you need to get uh, Gollum off of Sam, uh, of Frodo again, and then switch back to Sam, because you cannot actually attack Gollum when he's on Frodo, because all you'll do is uh, smack your Frodo character to death, and nothing will happen. All right, so another two hits. And another unwarranted piggyback ride later. We fall down below once again. Thank you, conveniently placed platform. You just saved my life. Somebody out there is on Sam's side. Not just us. Nope, not attack. Throw your... I almost said sword. Your rope! <laughs> So it's going to start a little chain reaction. And the steam is obscuring my screen slightly, but that's alright. I can still see what I'm doing. can ignore that orange bar there. And once again, switch back to Frodo. Get off me! And then back to Sam. And smack him! No! You will not take me with you! No! Uh-oh. Close call here, guys. Sam gonna make it? I don't know. Can he pull himself up? The answer is most definitely yes. So now, back to Frodo! Off! I have a best friend to save. So once we build that with Frodo, which we can only build that in Frodo, with Frodo. Now we can climb back up. Off! Back, you beast! Back!
All right, let's pull our buddy up. We made it this far. We can survive. We shall prevail. We must leave it lo at least long enough to get our victory party. We saved the world, everybody. All we have to do is just run for it. Run, hobbits, run! Run! We can do this! Now they'll automatically jump over the pits. Why hobbits can suddenly just leap over bounds like that? I don't know, but hey. It's the end. We're running for our lives. We did it. We are so awesome, everybody. So awesome. If only we can get out of here. I don't want to be molten lava just yet. It's gone. Yes, Mr. Frodo. It's over now. Now come the days of the king. does not belong to one man, but to all. All right, we saved the world, everybody. We are so awesome. It's gone. Yes, it is. What do we do now, though? And with that, we unlock our final two characters. Awesome. So surprisingly, I hit 100% there. I didn't think I would. Again, much, much to my surprise, which is really awesome. So now we're up to 28 Mithril Bricks now. Which is pretty sweet. So now we unlock free play, which is totally awesome. No more paling, no anything. We pretty much have free reign to where we want to go. So that's pretty cool. So let's finish off the story. And here we have the credit sequence. But we're going to skip that. We're going to show that at the very end. Because that plays after you finish all three books, so. Oh, hey, what's going on? They're building the title sequence. Well, the beginning credits, anyway. It's pretty cool. You don't actually normally see this, which is pretty awesome. I don't care if it's got nothing to do with, <laughs> with Lord of the Rings. It's pretty cool. Alright, so from now on, once you actually finish story mode, um, you will start here every time you load up the game here in Minas Tirith. So we have one more map stone right here. And there is one final one, which we have un not unlocked yet. Which is this one right here. Now from now on, um, obviously we can travel to any map stone even if you haven't discovered it. But now since we finished free play, when you travel to a map stone, now you have the option of traveling to it at day or during the night. Um, for the most part, it doesn't matter, but certain characters and uh, quests only appear either at night or during the day. Um, some actually appear in both. So for the most part, it doesn't matter. So unless you specifically need to go at night, it's just easier to do it during the day. So what we're going to do is we're just going to fast travel to that one. 
And then once we get there, let's discover it. Even though we apparently already knew it was there, which is pretty awesome. So that should be the final one. So I should be getting the trophy for that any second. There we go. So for unlocking all 18 map stones in the game, that is what you get. Most of them um, will, you can get during normal travel. Um, this is one uh, you will not actually pass in story mode. Um, there's a couple others too. Uh, aim on head is one I showed you have to actually turn, once you, either right before or right after you finish the actual chapter, you need to actually turn around and it's like right behind you. That is one you can easily miss. Uh, another one you can very easily miss is Edoras, um, down over here somewhere. Uh, because while you go around the town, you never actually go up the hill through it. So there's one. And another one you can easily miss is Lothlorien, because the entire area is bypassed through a cutscene. So you actually have to, uh, fast travel to it. Because that's where you sail in the boats afterward. You have to fast travel to it in order to unlock it. So those are a couple you may have missed if you do not have all 18 along the way. So as you can see, even though we have story mode uh, completely finished, there is a trail of guide studs around. Now, you will not actually see it on the map where it will lead to. But... It actually leads to Rivendell, but we're going to do that next time because it's actually a final, this is actually a bonus level. But one thing we need to do, uh, we are going to travel back to Hobbiton. Alright. So we want to go back home to the Shire. Our long journey is complete, and frankly, we deserve a well-earned rest. Am I totally going the wrong way? I think I am. Mainly because I'm pretty darn stupid. I need to go up this way. There we go. So here we have the customizer. And uh, there was one final cutscene I thought I was supposed to get. Oh well. What's up? Hi Bilbo. What's going on here? So yeah, back home, we now have our customizer opened up to us. Let's just show it off. I could have sworn there was one final cutscene in this area when you come back into this area, but it hardly matters. So as you can see, we can edit ourselves. Changing our weapons and our hats and everything. Um, if you've seen my Lego Star Wars, it's pretty much the same as that. I'm probably not going to be using this, so... Oh, and you actually have codes here. I didn't know that. This is the first time I've ever actually been in the customizer. I'm just messing around. And you can even give it a name. That's pretty darn sweet. I like that. Yes, I want to leave the customizer. So yeah, apologize here. I seriously thought there was one last cutscene you get by going back home. But that is a-okay. So next time, we will be following the guide studs, which again, like I said, we're going to actually take us to Rivendell. They won't appear in your map, but obviously they'll appear in front of you wherever you go. So, until you take care of that. So thank you very much for watching, everybody. And we're going to start the awesomeness that is free play and uh, exploring all the overworld stuff. So there's still a long way to go. Thank you everyone once again, and I hope she'll see you next time.